Hi, today is August 27th, 2023, and here are my poems for the day. The first one is poem number 1381 for the year, Francis Hines. Yesterday morning, I had barely gotten over the sadness of Greg's discarded card, when while changing from the number 2 to the number 1 at 14th Street, I came across a wrapped-up MTA electronic announcement board. In what was perhaps an extremely attenuated connection, I was reminded of the time in 1980 that the Washington Square Arch was wrapped. I thought it had been done by Christo and John Claude, who were famous for that, but I googled it and the artist who wrapped the Washington Square Arch was Francis Hines. I also learned that after Hines died in 2014, a large amount of his artwork was thrown into a dumpster in Watertown, Connecticut. They were found and shown at Hollis Taggart, Taggart Gallery last year. I was glad to learn that Hines's art was preserved, but learning this served as another sad reminder of Greg's discarded card. Poem number 1382, move along. Let's not live in the past. Onward and upward, tally-ho. Today is another day and it has barely begun. Let's enjoy the sun, even if we will be inside working for most of the day. Let's appreciate that today is a new day and let's move along. Poem number 1383, unsuccessful. She was happy that she could make a good living from her paintings, but it bothered the living fuck out of her that her successful paintings were the ones that she thought sucked. She loved to paint, but the paintings that sold were the ones that she spent the least amount of time and attention creating. She sometimes spent weeks or even months meticulously creating works that she thought were brave and brilliant and brave and innovative, and she all, would always include some of them in every gallery show. But she knew that the crappiest, crappy ones would sell immediately and that the ones she knew were great would be returned to her once the show ended unsold. She recognized that this was a luxury problem, and she hated herself for not simply refusing to offer up the crappy ones for sale. She felt that she was weak and that she liked money too much, and no matter how much money she made, she believed that she would always think of herself as unsuccessful. Poem number 1384, push-pull. There was a lot of self-imposed pressure that co coincided with a tendency to go easy on the self. This push-pull was often optimal, but occasionally the pressure was too much, and occasionally the easiness on the self was too much. Poem number 1385, push-me-pull-you. I saw the Dr. Doolittle movie with Rex Harrison before I read any of the books. Then I read many of the books, but I don't remember Hugh Lofting ever explaining how the push-me-pull-you was supposed to take a shit. I'm sure someone must have asked him that at some point. I wonder if he ever came up with an answer. Poem number 1386, Hugh Lofting. Today I learned that Hugh Lofting was so disgusted with the animal cruelty that he witnessed in World War I that he invented Dr. Doolittle as a partial reaction. What I wanted to know was whether Lofting was vegetarian or vegan, but he was not. And the last poem of the day, poem number 1387, Bob Barker. Bob Barker, who died yesterday, was a vegetarian. He prevented a lot of animal euthanasia by repeatedly telling people to spay and neuter their pets. I also learned in his obituary that he believed that if he were to be a contestant on The Price is Right, that he would suck. He didn't know prices, but he knew about animals, and he lived to almost 100. Happy almost 100th birthday, Bob. Rest in peace and power. Okay, that's it. Thank you. I appreciate you. I truly do appreciate you. Thank you.